Hi, and welcome to episode number three of the Worlds Adrift podcast from Bossa Studios. My name is Malford, and I'm the host for the episode. Joining me is Luke. Hello. Hi, Luke. Uh, Julia is away this week in uh, Germany at Gamescom, but she sends her love. Um, we've got quite a few things to talk about now. Um, I think probably the uh, there's we'll, we'll, we'll come back to the uh, the feature lock later because we're feature lock now for update twenty seven. But we're going to talk about a few other little bits first. Uh, so I think the first thing uh, we've heard a few people talking about a uh, a larger map for the game. There's a few people who think that that is coming in the next update. Um, and uh, well, that's not true. Um, <laughs> we're not hundred percent sure where the uh, well, you haven't built one. I ha- well, I it was actually, all down to you, Matt. Yeah, it was all me, down to you, the map man. Well, I did, I did build a larger map, but um, yes. we sent it off to the uh, to be load tested, and it broke. So, yeah, the the that's not uh, you know it's something we've got sort of tentatively on the horizon, and every time we build new maps, we you know we we're like okay, maybe this time we can try the bigger map, and this you know there's just issues here and there. Which yeah, it's on, it's, it's ongoing. It's yeah, exactly. Every time we make some optimizations, we're like right. Boom, double the map size, let's see what happens. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, eventually we'll get through all of the big issues and we'll be able to have a bigger map. But yeah, it's not it's not currently on the horizon. Um, yeah, it's just that there's... Uh, because as soon as you start increasing the map size, you start massively increasing the number of just things that there are to render uh, and put in the game. So it just becomes impossible for our computers to handle everything at the same time. But yeah, we want to... As we improve things, optimise things, uh, we'll get to it. And there will be a lovely big map for everyone. Yeah, maybe we'll get in the uh, the drawn weather walls and zones yeah. as well at that point. So it would be a lot more uh, fancier world. Yes, I think that the drawn thing will add a lot and allow us to do some really interesting stuff with the layout. But yeah, and that's all you know stuff we're working on, just not right now. Not immediate. Not for now, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, there's you know a, a, few, a few sort of the big um, things people have talked about with Worlds Adrift are... Uh, I think some people maybe uh, aren't aware of sort of what we're already doing in Worlds Adrift that um, pushes the limits of what other MMOs do. You know, we already do a lot of things that are, in terms of physical things, a lot more than most people are even trying. So that's where a lot of the things that are quite easy in other games or, you know, don't really tax things start to have unpredictable effects and behave quite differently in our game which is the, the big reason why these things don't come until later. Yeah, I mean, especially like the... Uh, I mean, players know how much we've been going back and forth on the trying to walk on ships and yeah. the jittery and the rubber banding. But that very act of having like 10 of you stood on a separate physical moving object and be able to just like jump off and grapple onto island or jump off and grapple to another physical moving object without you seeing the players kind of juttering and, and stuttering about or... Like warping away for a second and then coming back onto like when they jump off a ship, like just that ver- that circumstance there is it's crazy and, it, and it's yeah. taken a hell of a lot of uh, you know sort of crazy bespoke code and work around just to get that feeling of that freedom of like I can just step on this ship and and there's no you know I yeah. can jump off land onto this separate physical object and I don't get any sort of weird. Uh, warping or anything like that. Yeah, there aren't any other games that we know of that you know handle the same number of those sorts of bespoke cases. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's little things like that that mean you know um, it's sort of complicates complicated bespoke system that when interacts with other systems can you know have lots of fun. Yeah, exactly. So you know, there's um, a lot of that stuff going on, but you know that's why these things take longer than you might expect. Um, so speaking of things that take longer than we might expect, um, there was the, uh, <laughs> the PTS went out to the public, um, and there were some issues with, uh, characters moving over. Um, do you know much about this leak? Um, I know we copied the world state from Capulco mm. and then the plan was that any Capulco players would have their ships and everything else yeah. when they logged in. Um, everyone else would basically just have their character history, so they'd have the schematics they learned, but they'd essentially their character was dumped in a brand new world for them. Um, few issues with that. I know that I believe initially the 10 Rui players had their stuff mm. transferred over. I think now we have Kapolka and their ships Yeah, are now up on the latest version. But yeah, it was just, you know, there was a... 
again, it's uh, due to the nature of Water Drift, our, our server backend that has to be a little bit bespoke. So this is something we haven't done before. Yeah. I'm getting this this test server ready, and it will definitely improve, mm, it, um, and it will be a, a much smoother process going forward. Yeah, um, especially coming up to update 27, it should. You know, we we learn a lot, <laughs> I think, <laughs> and we know how to, you know, have a lot uh, more stable release with the PTS now. We're yeah, kind of get getting the flow sort of ironed out, and then we can be like, oh, okay. So obviously, this was the first time we've done it, so bringing all these players together, like having a world state and having that all transfer over, there was going to be. The occasional hiccup. Yeah, exactly. It's another thing that we're doing that's completely brand new to us. So, um, but not it's not anymore. So, but next. I think you know. I mean, of all the things that could go wrong, I think you know, for the most part, we've got it out there. People can play. They can test things. Yeah, um, that's the key point of the PTS, really. Yeah. So, any improvements on that, I think, will be a, a big win, and hopefully, yeah. players will see the the worth in in a few of the growing pains. But yeah, exactly. So yeah, let's get on to update twenty seven now, um, which is obviously the the big upcoming update. Sure um, is. Yeah, so we've got you know quite a few things to talk about when it comes to that. You know, the last time Luke and I were on this uh, podcast together, we talked about a lot of things that we were hoping to get in. So we can now, I think, we've uh, we've now got the confirmed list yes. because we have entered what we call feature lock. Yes. On update twenty seven. Exactly. So everything that's you know not been done yet is being cut. And maybe for update 28 or later, it'll come in. But um, everything else is going in in update 27. So let's uh, start going through the list of things that we can confirm. So yes. the first one is pretty obvious. We have the hybrid uh, PvE PvP server, which is uh, going to definitely go in. I think that was, you know... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the linchpin of the release. Yes, that was the big thing that we were announced just before we started doing it. So yes, that's definitely happening. Um, and that'll be uh, limited hostile actions towards other players yeah. um you know uh, from from the wilderness through to the expanse the badlands however is the badlands and you'll become essentially uh, pvp enabled if you cross over a sand wall yeah exactly so it's pretty obvious to tell if you want to avoid pvp you avoid the badlands yeah um and yeah and that's that sh that will be in the next update and one of the big things that we had to support that um to support the sort of more pve elements was the uh, unlooted chests that accumulate loot. So if you get to the end of a difficult challenge, you're likely to get more loot. Yeah. Or if you find just a, a chest that was particularly well hidden, yeah, and you know where it is. Um, oh, along with this change as well, um, all of the containers and chests, they they no longer spawn if they have loot. They're essentially always there. Mm -hmm. And when the island uh, gets struck by lightning and its resources get filled, um, then the uh, the chests essentially get filled and that they'll close. Yeah. But otherwise, once you've looted them, they'll they'll basically remain open and they'll they'll stay there. Yeah. So that means that, you know, if you are scouting an island, whereas before you would go through this elaborate cave or dungeon, you get to the end, and there'd be nothing there, and you'd go, oh, this is. But when when really the the island creator probably intended for there to be, um, the chest they would have placed the chest there. But in the old system, it if that chest hadn't been assigned loot, it wouldn't appear. Yeah. Whereas now at least you can get to the end and you would see that it was there and go, ah, oh, damn it, it's already been looted. Yeah, someone else so, has But at least I know where it is for future and maybe I can loop around, mm -hmm. you know, uh, over the course of the coming like weeks or days and, and, and I know where it is. So I've got that little bit of information about where it is. Yeah. Um, so that should be a little bit easier. Um, mm -hmm. And then, of course, yeah, if, you, if you're lucky enough to stumble upon something that hasn't been looted in a while, then uh, you will be rewarded for that. Mm -hmm. So it's it, it pays to, you know, to not just skim the surface of violence, to really, really, delve, in. really delve in and explore yeah. them, yeah. Great. And to obviously tackle those more difficult challenges as well. Um, so the next thing we've got here on this list is the Reviver Charge. Yes. Which is, uh, we talked about this a little bit before, but the idea of that is that if you die when you're some distance away from your reviver uh, it'll take a little chunk away from your reviver charge uh, and when that goes down to nothing uh, your ship will start to take damage you can uh, replenish it by landing on a shipyard so the uh, the reason for this is that it gives you um, a little bit uh, of an incentive if you want to start boarding people to get in close or to engage in combat from a distance um, because at the moment the meta game is a sort of just a yeah I mean, it, it was it was really a case for a um, defenders to essentially ward off an attack if they were successful at like defending multiple times right whereas before let's say you, you know you didn't know where the enemy ship was or they were keeping a distance like every time you killed an attacking player 
he really suffered no no repercussions, yeah, right? Exactly. Like all of his equipment was on his belt, he was back at his ship and he would he would glide down or, or jump down to you and, and continue the attack. Whereas now the attackers actually have to be careful either by bringing their ship in close or if they have died too many times uh, while trying to attack you, they're going to have to stop. Otherwise, their revivers will run out of charge and if they continue to revive, their ship will take more and more damage as, it, as the revivor explodes from, yeah. from the extreme energy unleashed in reviving a dead person. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. So as a uh, as a, a attacking player, I've got to either, you know, use some more complex strategies uh, or uh, suffer the consequences, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, in addition to that, we've got the new Tier 0 going in. Yes, which I believe is now called Haven, or The Haven. The, the Haven, yeah, that sounds right. I, only heard, I just randomly saw from her yesterday. I didn't even know if we've confirmed a, well, a law name for it, but... You didn't tell me, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? He was calling it Haven. I'm okay. going to assume that's maybe what it's called. I think Haven's nice, so I like that. It is nice. Yeah. I used to go to Haven holidays as a kid <laughs> Perfect. Um, on the Exmouth coast in oh, Devon. It sounds beautiful. <laughs> it was. <laughs> good. So there's an anecdote for you. Yeah, that's good. Um, so, okay, so let's talk a little bit about what Tier Zero is. What's your design, I believe? So Yes. Yes, Haven. Let's talk about Haven. Um, Haven is uh, a nice sort of ish safe place that you start the game in um it's, it's really it's a it's a tutorial zone um and it allows you to um get to grips with moving a bit of crafting a bit of exploration it teaches you what uh the you know the basic things you need to interact with are like scanning uh, what knowledge nodes look like um that sort of thing uh, pretty early on and so if you're an experienced player and you're jumping in you could probably breeze through it in about sort of five to ten minutes but you know you can take your time with it if you want it's only a, a small island, um, so um, there's not too much to get lost doing there, and you won't build any ships there. There's nothing to sort of uh, mess up other players with. Um, yeah, there's no there's no combat. Yeah. You can, but you, there's little few simple things to craft, like we, which I'm, I'm sure players will be happy to hear. We give you the torch, mm, yes. <laughs> schematic by default now. Yeah. Um, so it's not some complex. Uh, you know, technology that you need to have find a schematic for. Yeah, exactly. You don't need to find an ancient schematic to figure out how to wrap a piece of cloth around some wood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's that. And uh, within there, you're likely to meet some other players. Um, we have a system which means that you're, you're likely to just meet someone. Yeah, I mean, there. I guess we, we could talk about the actual law yeah. side of things, right? Because yeah. um, you, you begin uh, Haven, the Haven item. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to... Which one we say that? Okay. You begin in the Haven uh, yeah. aboard a crashed Ark. Yes. Um, it's an old ship from the old world um, that has repurposed and you essentially, uh, for whatever reason, you were living on there. Yeah. Uh, um, but they're old, they're rusty. Yeah. Falling apart. And they're falling apart. It's been so, held together by bits of rope and uh, whatnot. Yeah. So you start um, this the, the tutorial area inside... Uh, this arc and very much like a revival chamber but it's got some unique art it's very nice yeah. it's an old rusted old ship and you get out and essentially your your end goal is to um, network with the revival chamber network yeah exactly so, the, so the, the, as a player at the start of the game you aren't actually you know you when you die you don't go to revival chamber because yeah. you need to access that that network and that requires yeah, exactly. some knowledge yeah so within tier zero if you die you go back to your ship rather than the revival chamber network um because uh essentially in the in the old world um when everything started going wrong uh, the revival chamber network got overloaded uh, and all of the revival chambers collapsed and there's this sort of figure who will introduce a little bit later who uh, set up this network that would activate at a certain point and the network is essentially the world map. So that's why there's all these active revivers in this one area. It's because this character um, unlocked them all. So you, once you tap into that network, then uh, you get transported into tier one. Yeah. And you you, act, you find a, an old uh, crashed sort of reviver that still yeah. has uh, the ability to basically, red, you know, to input people into the network yeah you just have to sort of charge uh, yeah. it up with this yeah exactly thing you've done. and that'll be the uh, we've released gifts of the animation of the like central part yeah, of exactly. the reviver like and, and that basically will take you and anyone else like kind of stood in that area yeah it will transport you all to the same uh 
uh, wilderness island. So if you do, you know, while you're playing the tutorial and you're hanging out, if you do find other people and you do end up just chatting and hanging out in this like kind of relatively safe space, um, then you might decide, hey, let's let's continue our journey together. Let's yeah. let's go into the revival network together and off to the wilderness, and, and then we can kind of start our adventures. Yeah, exactly. So hopefully, it's a nice way of meeting people in a safe environment. Uh, learning to play the game, and then when you're together uh, in the main world, then you can build a ship together and continue. So yeah. it has a little, almost a little bit of light matchmaking built into it. It's nice. Yeah. Um, so next we've got, there's a little bit of uh, rebalancing of material stats and crafted stats. So we've gone through um, some of the way that um, our materials work in the same way we often do, um, and have just tweaked things yeah. a little bit. And there's a, there's a lot more added. Um, yeah. Creatures now drop leather. Yes. Um, their hides. Thuntermites drop some chitin. Mm -hmm. Their carapace, which will be used in. I honestly don't know how many schematics we've added. Um, I've added two. No, three. Not specifically for the Thuntermite stuff, but I mean yes. in total. Right, it's okay. got to be. We've got to be closing on a hundred, I reckon. Yeah. Like yeah, between a fifty and hundred of new new schematics. It's, yes. It's crazy how, how much we've had to just like yeah. spin spreadsheet. Yes. Knee deep in spreadsheets, just <laughs> yeah, all three designers just uh, yeah. cramming stuff in, yeah, yeah, to the point where you know. Um, so there is going to be uh, a a lot of just new stuff to see and find. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. So that's an exciting addition. Yeah, we've got some really cool new uh, resources to use. Yeah, uh, and we can use some of that stuff. Some of the and also we've re we've repurposed some of the older schematics. So for example, yeah. the glider I think was just metal and wood or something, something that didn't make any sense yeah. anyway. Um, so now you need metal for the frame. Yeah. Um, you're going to need cloth for the actual, um, mm -hmm. the, the wings of the suit, and then leather for the backpack. Yeah. So exactly. stuff just makes a little bit more sense now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a bit more of a holistic crafting system. That's nice. Yeah. Um, and you can use that holistic crafting system to craft furniture for your ship. Yay! <laughs> Yay! You can sit down. At a table. Yeah, so there's a there's well, a, a there's actually. a does that work? I can't remember. You can sit at you can't sit on a table. No. I mean you can if you get on top of it and okay. sit, yeah, but fair. but you know, um yeah, so so I mean sit on a chair. Yeah, so tables, chairs, you got some shelves. Oh yes. Um some wool hangings, I believe. Yep, I some wool hanging stuff and you, we get like a nicer like captain's chair which you yes. use some leather to make the seat for them. Yeah, so you know, only build one of those for your captain, or else you'll be a liar. Yeah, exactly. You don't yeah. want to do that. Yeah, yeah. It's a prestigious <laughs> yeah. chair. Exactly. Yeah. A little um, bit rarer to find than just. I mean, because you, you you have like, you know, nicer chairs. Then you can also find just like sitting barrels, which is like yeah. just the common stuff that you can just slap a barrel down and sit on it. So. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Uh, and we've also got the ancient atlas compasses. Yes. Um, or at least well, one kind anyway, which is the... Uh, I don't think we've announced what the new um, peoples We are. haven't. Do no. we do this now or are we like... I don't think it's a great idea to do it now because no. I think that um, Julia's got some plans. Oh, of course, yeah. yeah. So she wants to do us uh, some special sort of announcement stuff with that. But, it, but essentially, uh, if you go rummaging around in, in Scrap, you'll find a, this atlas compass. Yeah. And you can place it down anywhere, on an island, on your ship, and it will spin and then point to the location of some uh, hidden treasure. Yeah, exactly. And then if you basically, just by you know process of elimination, you can sort of track where it's pointing at and eventually deduce that it's, you know, on this island, mm -hmm. then yeah, you can track it down. Maybe sometimes, you know, you're on an island and it points into it and you're like, all right, looks like we've got to go cave diving. Yeah. And that's exactly. kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and you're finding it has an entirely unique... Um, set of items, loot, yeah. law, everything. Law, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's got its own complete sort of almost loot a, table, which is an entire yeah. loot table for itself. Exactly. Um, a lot of stuff in there. Yeah, there's tons of stuff. Yeah, lots of law, which is good. And no doubt we'll be adding more to it. I know a couple yeah. of the well, future I'm, stuff for like 28. We're probably like, mm, yeah, yeah. We want to add it to the to that loot table. Yeah, I'm working on something very exciting right now, which is for that loot table. In fact, yes, yes. Um, uh, yeah, and in addition to that, we've got the expanded cooking and food system, uh, which yep. does also tie into the, the uh, ancient compass a little bit. But yeah, um, the that's basically uh, a better cooking system and some things you can put on your ship to cook with. Yeah, I think we we probably already dis said what happened, what the plan was last year. Yep. I know the food food system was a little bit further on than a lot of the other stuff. Yeah, um, it means that the the campfire now. There's none of this. Uh, you 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 need to stand near the campfire. The campfire is essentially almost like an assembly station. You mm -hmm. your mouse or oh, you hover over it and you interact with it, and it'll bring up all your cooking recipes. Um, 
and then you put in the necessary ingredients, cook it, you can walk away and you'll get a little system message when your food is ready and you can go back and pick it up. Uh, yeah. Then on top of that, you'll be able to find the schematic for a stove, which is a ship part, which can also cook your food. So mm -hmm. you know, when you've got your little tables and chairs set up, you've got your little stove below deck and you can kind of prepare all your meals. Yeah. Uh, while on the way to a, a new adventure. Yeah, and you can leave something cooking and come back and get it later as well, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, next thing is the uh, tailoring stuff, the, the the clothes that you can craft and the dyes that you can use those uh, use for those, um, yep. which uh, then we, we might expand on this a little bit more later. We probably will. Uh, yeah, we've only... Something a bit more similar to the cooking Yeah, system. we put a few common and uncommon clothing yeah. schematics in. We'll probably put a couple of rare ones in in the future yeah. and... You know, maybe even some clothes that can only be crafted, you know, um, just to wear it up a little bit. Yeah. So, um, but for now, the, what's nice about this is that, you know, there's this, the system for basically customising what you look like a little bit more. Yeah. So, uh, I know we have the new icons that some players have seen in, like, Update 26. Yeah. Um, so, with the, the clothing items, if you, if you find the schematic to be able to dye cloth, you'll be able to obtain pigments from chest, scrap, other unique locations, but also, uh, yeah, if you salvage like scrap items now, you, you know, if you notice there's quite a elaborate color on that scrap item, yeah. when you scrap it, you'll get the pigment for that color. So you can kind of, you know, you kind of can search through and go, ah, I know what that's going to give me. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you use your uh, dyed cloth schematic, you can actually throw in the pigment with some cloth and it'll come out with that color cloth. Yeah. And uh, then when you go to craft the clothes, you know, when you the components will be listed like shirt, and like you know scarf scarf or something yeah and then you know you'll see when you put that blue cloth on the scarf you'll see the icon of the uh the clothes where the scarf is you'll see it go blue yeah so it's quite nice you can even have a little preview uh, of like what the item's gonna look like when you actually crafted it it's very fetching yes and also it was really nice as well because we've got that when you craft inventory items it says like who made it yeah so we'd like to think that someone who has like quite a rare clothing item or they've you know they've got these rare pigments, they've made quite an elaborate colour scheme that's quite popular. You could actually, you know, your clothes would be traded around and have your yep. little name on it as, uh, as who made it, which is quite nice. Yeah, so hopefully there's a bit more of a room for somebody to even role play as a tailor. Yeah, and, and I think in the future, up to 28, all the artists, as we're walking over to do the podcast, they're mm. doing the the loom. Yes. Which will be uh, how you craft clothes. So the yep. clothes will kind of be like cooking you'll need. But right now, you'll be able to craft it from, from your inventory. From inventory yeah. but in the future, you'll need a specific item to, yeah. to weave your clothes. So we want <laughs> kind of want sweatshop ships. Mm -hmm. That's what we uh, That's <laughs> ideal. For we us. want like a, just a row of looms, <laughs> like in this sort of like big yeah. tanker. And then yeah. you've got some poor guy just running between running the looms, loom just loom. collecting the clothes, yeah. putting them in storage, ready for <laughs> ready for trading. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> exactly what we want. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, in future, maybe we'll have uh, more sort of. Uh, almost class specific uh, objects bonus, that you can use yeah, for, yeah bonuses and stuff yeah. like that so if you do specialise in being a tailor you get some fancy perks yeah anyway that's all on the horizon but that's that's not for 27 no but the 27 is clothes, yeah, yeah craft dying clothes recently. finding clothes schematics and yeah yes next thing on our list is turrets in game so all those turrets that people place lovingly in the uh, island crater uh, will be in the game yeah we haven't actually talked about this one because Ooh. we weren't sure it was going to go in. But it is in. So we didn't mention it last time as a potential yeah. even. We were just like... Yeah. Not good. But no, yeah, so um, as you as you can see in the, the roadmap, uh, yeah. islands will now fight back. That's right, yeah. Um, your ships will get shot at yes. by islands and you will need to shoot back <laughs> at the islands to kill yeah. any evil turrets that the island creators have put out there. Yeah, and some of the island creators have been very... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I have a feeling, but I mean, this adds to the you know the, the loot accumulation yeah. stuff, right? For those particularly evil island creators, like, you know, some of these islands are not going to be soloable. No. You're actually probably, I mean, we're not, you know, we need to, like, see if there's any rock solid ones out there, because yeah. there's a lot <laughs> that have suddenly become active. So what might have been a peace line before is now a hellscape. Yes. And you might need a group of players to even get to the loot. Yeah, there's some pretty, <laughs> some pretty dangerous islands out there. Yeah, so that's going to be uh, that's gonna be a learning experience for yeah. everyone, but with a big, big, uh, just, yeah, a big, big change for, for yeah. just exploring. It really changes just the feel of uh, exploring an island because you never know when there's going to be a, a real risk that just sort of comes yeah. out of the bushes and starts <laughs> shooting. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, um, so that's really exciting. Um, so we've done the we've talked a little bit about the gear durability and the uh, gear balancing that comes with that. Um, mm. So that stuff is all going in for update twenty seven. Yes. 
Um, um, so now gear doesn't drop on death. Yeah. Um, but it does have uh, durability. Yeah. So that you know, if you keep your head torch on for X amount of time, it will eventually start to flicker yeah. and then uh, no longer work, and it'll break, and you have to make a new one. Same with the glider. Mm -hmm. um, but that does mean we've been able to rebalance the glider. Yes, and make it fun again. And make it fun again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You can't glide to another island. It will wear itself yeah. out. Uh, the, if you use it for like too long in one session, yeah. it will. Uh, tear it, tear itself apart. Yeah, exactly. The thing we're aiming for with the glider is this sort of thing where if you're just using it, you know, for short distances and to explore islands and not doing anything too crazy with it, the wear is going to be quite minimal. Yeah. But if I then, you know, if I'm trying to make those, uh, you know, trying to get my ship frame to the top of the island and uh, to the top of the world and, and just glide you know, everywhere, glide then. down on everyone, yeah, then it's going to start breaking pretty soon. Or wreck itself. Yeah. So hopefully that uh, means that people can feel a bit more free to just use their gear and, and yeah, exactly. yeah, just wear head torches. Yeah, yeah, because they know that if they die, it's not going to be dropped on there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, speaking of gear, um, the guitar has uh, finally been finished. So yeah, right at the last second. So that is going in. Um, so that's very exciting for me, especially. Um, yeah, you've been pushing for that been one. Been pushing for it, yeah. It sounds really nice, especially some of those chords. They sound really beautiful. So yeah, so we have a we actually have a proper, you know, you can play whatever song you want now, can't you? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, as long as it's in the major. E as long as it's in E major, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so there's yeah, and it sounds really, really, just really pretty. Um, it, it sings okay to other players. It doesn't sing amazing. So uh, you know, if you're trying to make a band, yeah, you might have trouble. But uh, just having someone sitting on your uh, ship and playing some chords is going to sound really beautiful. Um, yeah. yeah, next to the next to the stove while yeah. cooking up some manta curry. Exactly. So you can everyone can sit around the campfire while your sweatshops in the background with a sweatshop in the back, drowning out the sound of the sweatshop with your <laughs> yeah. guitar. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's very exciting. Uh, and speaking of things that only just made it in, um, we've got the uh, Gymno Thruster. Hell yes. I've, yeah. We haven't even done any gifts of that, have we? No. I've noticed we shared them around the office, but yes. and everyone's excited about it. And again, I don't know if we're announcing... I think that marketing would really like to have that to properly announce. So maybe Possibly, we'll just but it is people a... with the name Gymno Thruster and they can decide what it yeah, is. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a new gear slot. I know we've yeah. talked about it before because we called it the... And, Inertia pack or something oh, yeah, like that's that. True. We have, yeah. We, did have a, we had a name for it, but now it's got its like law name. I've in fact seen that if we've if since it's on the website, chances are we've announced it. Oh yeah, 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 true. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, but yeah. Uh, I mean, essentially, how it works is it removes all outside forces. Yeah. Um, so any whatever so direction you're going in, whatever speed you activate yeah, it, and yeah. you just keep going. So it's a very interesting, quite high risk, high reward one because yeah. If you if you use it while at full like swing, um, you'll continue to drift at that speed and potentially collide with an island. Yeah. Um, if you're falling to your death, this is not going to save you. No. All it's going to do is maintain your speed. velocity. Yeah. It might stop you speeding up. Yeah. But you yeah. can you know you can deactivate it and activate it at like opportune times and do like little cool kind of. Yeah. You can jump large gaps because you know. We did some of, really cool tricks with it the other day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and I think it will definitely. It definitely has you know. Vastly different than the glider and, yeah. and other things like that. So it'll be interesting to see how it how it gets used for even exploring islands as well yeah. as uh, combat opportunities. Yeah, and you know, people would be interesting to see when people have the choice between those the two of them, what they end up using more of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also, I suppose we've got the stasis back as well, which yeah. goes in the same. Other gear uh, is the stasis yeah, yeah. pack, yeah. and I mean, it, it pretty much describes what it does on the roadmap. But yeah. when you when you activate it, it will freeze you in place. Yeah. Um, for a few seconds, and when you deactivate it, it will um, continue continue trajectory. Yeah. So we we had some cool stuff um, like combat tactics where we would swing up from underneath someone's ship and hit hit the stasis pack right above like where the pilots and you basically just get some free pistol shots as you're yeah, kind of just suspended in the air and you can pop it a few times and before they've noticed and they've turned their guns to you, you've deactivated it and your trajectory's carried on and you've flung off from their ship again. Yeah. So it's uh, another one that's a potentially interesting tactic. Yeah. And and also, it can kind of save you if, you're, yeah. if you fall off, you quickly press the button and you'll freeze in place and you can yeah, grab it. Yeah, extra second. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. really good if you don't have great reaction times because you can just, uh, you press it and you can go, okay, I've got a second to think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what am I going to grapple to? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And uh, then there's uh, the, the final thing that I believe is on the no. There's two more things on the list. There's the Regus yeah. Greaves, which is on the same vein as those things. It doesn't it doesn't work in exactly the same way as, as the equipment because it's a, a set of sort of special boots. It's a gear slot on your yeah, feet, so exactly. it's like the hip lamp. 
foot gear. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that is uh, sort of like um, almost like climbing 2.0 uh, in that you have uh, the ability to walk on walls. Yeah, uh, except for um, climbable stuff, but otherwise yeah. um, it changes your camera angle and stuff. So you get some really interesting angles on the yeah. world because especially if you like, you know, you walk underneath your ship and you can just stand on on the keel of the ship and just yeah. sort of look out at the world upside down. Which yeah, when is, you combine uh, that with the gymno thruster, you can really make the game feel a bit like Gravity Rush, which I'm a big fan of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that was, uh, yeah, we had that, that gif of us sort of walking upside down on a bridge and stuff. Yes, was, uh, there's uh, yeah potential for extreme sports as well because we had some uh, hoverboard sort of stuff with that as well. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we like, and it, this is something we, we made and we didn't even realise until afterwards until another designer who's not on the project <laughs> mentioned it. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, oh, what happens if... Uh, you, you use the Regus greaves and, and, and you walk on a panel that's got lifters and we were like, I don't know, but that sounds amazing. So yeah. we did it and I, I was dragging Tom around while he was uh, walking on a panel just like yeah. in circles while he was getting uh, thrown around on a, on yeah. a floating platform. Hoverboard, there you yeah. go. Yeah, and it was kind of Confirmed. a really janky <laughs> hoverboard. A very jank hoverboard. But, you know. I imagine you could potentially Oh, he also, you know, uh, uh, later on the day he was, he was walking on a beetle. Oh, maybe. He was walking around a beetle, a pantomime <laughs> as it was flying around. That's so good. Okay. And, then it, and then it parked him on a tree. I love that. This is the best video game ever. Yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're trying to get it to. Yeah, uh, and the last thing I think that we want to touch on is the uh, salvageable schematics. Yeah, so knowledge is a little bit more renewable. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's just, a, it's like part one of the, of the schematics rework, but... Um, the idea is it's just a simple thing of if I get a schematic and I don't want to use it, I could just salvage it and I get a bit of free knowledge from that. Yeah, so any schematic you, you find that you don't want or there's no longer just a destroy and that's it. Yeah. Um, you can actually yeah get some knowledge back for it. And, and even schematics you find, you know, you can just, even if you find just like, you know, random common items, you can just be like, hey, you know, yeah. salvage, get some knowledge, use it towards another schematic or... Yeah. Other stuff that will have purchasable for knowledge in the future. In the future, yeah. So I think that covers everything that's going in for <gasps> that's 27. That's update 27. Yeah, so if, uh, if a feature that we've talked about uh, we didn't just mention, that means that it's probably either 28 or later. Yeah, I know ciphers have been pushed into 28. We yes. tried to get those ones in. Yeah, we tried um, our best, but it did not work out. But that's fine. That's, that's update 28. That's update stuff, 28. I, I feel yeah. like there's still enough in 27 to get your teeth into. Yes. And in um, fact, the, and it all com accompanies with the world wipe as well. So you yes. will all be starting fresh in update twenty seven. An entirely fresh map with lots of brand new islands. Yep. Yeah. So in fact, that's probably uh, something that a lot of people will be quite happy about. Um, we're we've revamped our island export system, so the new map is going to have some actually really quite up to date islands in it because we've had islands that have been exported as soon as sort of a week ago that we should be able to start using. So. Um, yeah, the new map I mean, should have tons and tons of new islands in it for everyone to explore. Yeah, yeah. and lots of unknown dangers. I mean, even the old ones that that maybe were a little bit safer earlier. Yeah, are now a whole new world of pain. So yes, um, I mean, so there was an island that's really quite nice uh, in the game at the moment uh, that I was just walking around in earlier, and I was getting blown to pieces. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a uh, yeah, that's something to look out for. The new world is going to feel really different as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, okay, we, that's probably enough talking about twenty seven update 27 for now because um, that's pretty much everything that's going in. Um, so let's go on to some community questions. Um, we've got our first question here, which is by Jabrads, which I just answered, or we just answered, which is, is there going to be a wipe? Yes, there is going to be a wipe. In update uh, 27. Yes, update 27 is going to have a wipe because any new map we make, we need to have a new wipe, and to get to zero in, we need a new map. So yeah, there's a wipe. Um, Sky Silverwing has asked this question. I was wondering when we'll get in the next significant change to gameplay on the player side. To be more specific, something like weapon type to mess around with. Also, have you considered moving Melee 1.0 to a higher priority on the roadmap as well? I don't know what Melee 1.0 entails, but if I could just swing a sword in one direction, I'd be satisfied with that. Smiley face. Um, so I think uh, there's going to be a lot of quite significant stuff to the player side in the next update, but not the sort of thing you've mentioned here. Yeah, I mean, so all of the, the new gear items yeah. definitely switch up what you can do as a player. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, in terms of melee, we, we'll see. Hopefully, uh, you know, 
we've got some Tom time to, to yes, start Tom playing. Yes, Tom time is the most crucial resource for that sort of thing. Along with the character stuff. Uh, yeah. That's how we managed to get all of these uh, new gear, gear items in. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, I mean... I think melee is... Definitely is, something I'd like to explore, yeah. along with the, the rework of the, the ranged combat. So Yeah, and melee 1.0 is, is quite similar to, to what you suggest here. It is essentially just swinging yeah. something in a direction uh, to do a basic hit. Uh, and that, that again, that, that will come. We're, we're going to go through, uh, now that we're sort of through the tough part of Update 27 from a design perspective, there's going to be some conversations in the next sort of uh, few weeks probably about what we're prioritising uh, reprioritizing things, uh, what's coming next, that kind of stuff. But we're still sort of got our heads down, making sure that Update 27 comes out and there's no big bugs and stuff. So, um, yeah, we're, we're reshuffling will probably happen at some point, but what will get reshuffled, I don't know yet. Yeah. Uh, the next question is from Seth Farmer. Uh, they, he says, I'm curious about the prospect of more deployable structures like the assembly station in the future. I'd like to see islands being fought over for an oil rig that would periodically generate fuel or that can process uh, wood into fuel or even a mining platform that harvests minerals periodically from an island they're placed on. Thank you for the podcast. Well, thank you for listening. Um, yeah, so we have uh, the idea for structures which uh, will exist in form of lighthouses when we do territory control. Yeah, and I have been thinking about, you know, like if, later on, you know, because a lot of these sort of games, they are. You initially start with getting your hands dirty and having to salvage every yeah. mineral yourself. But it would definitely be interesting if, you know, you could place some sort of mineral extractor on top of a, a mining node, you know, and, yeah, and get some, more from it. And then you could leave stuff. it happen and but someone could come along and destroy it or, or, yeah. or steal it and stuff. So, yeah, there's definitely no game opportunities there. Yeah, I think I we're think going that's... to definitely start looking at more stuff like that as, yeah. uh, as we're kind of doing, you know, kind of freeing up a lot of resources to be able to start creating these these features now yeah exactly and some of the systems that we have uh on the horizon we can probably sort of uh repurpose to do some things like this uh with a little bit less work so we'll see how that goes but yeah i like the idea of structures um and we will have some structures for sure but what those structures are uh, i don't know yet it probably won't be able to build an entire like village on an island but your sort of territory will have um, play, things you can build and cool stuff you can make. Uh, and on that note, in fact, um, Haxter has asked, do you possibly have a rough estimate for when we might see territory cra- capture slash control implemented? P.S. Can I get a shout out to my ghost of the revolution? No, you may not. Um, <laughs> I guess that's his alliance. Yeah, no. Shout out to ghost of the revolution. Um, uh, and the rough estimate on that is um, soon? No, I don't know. Um that's been deprioritized for now, uh, but I, it's it's one of the things that was high on the priority just before update twenty seven. So it's quite likely that we'll be working. I think it's still pretty soon-ish. it's still pretty high up there. Yeah. Um, I we yeah we don't know yet. I'm hoping that like it'll be the big feature that we we move on to. Yeah. Um, it's certainly right. possible. Because we, we, yeah, we 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 actually had quite a lot of work on it done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was, it, it, so, it's part way done. So um, depending we'll get on what it, gets we'll, prioritized. Yeah, we'll get in there and finish it. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully that won't be too long. Um, but yeah, we don't know. We don't have any timelines for that stuff yet. Yeah, would we give you a better answer like, in, in you know a couple of podcast time? In a maybe. couple of podcast time. Yeah. yeah. All right. Exactly. Cool. So I think that just about covers everything. Um, is there anything you wanted to add, Luke, or should we just move on to the outro? Um, I think so. I think we've waffled on. For we've quite waffled a long time. on for. I'm about to swear. Shouldn't swear on podcast. I thought you said far too long, and I was like, "This has been swearing about that." That would have been fine, yeah. But oh, yeah, far too. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> no swearing allowed. Um, so thanks for listening to episode three of the World of Drift podcast. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can do so on worldsadrift.com, on facebook.com forward slash worldsadrift, or on Twitter at worldsadrift. You can also speak to us there directly, and I'm sure that Julia will put our tags in the posts about this. Um, So, I have been Malford. Thank you so much for listening. And this here is Luke. Yes, thank you for listening. I hope those little deets were good for your feet. (laughs) That's a good (laughs) sign-up. All right. I love you. Bye. See ya.